Silent stone slabs, damp in the chill night air, loom grey and cold, solid and bare, piled on each other, quarried and hewn, grey-green in the light of an eerie moon. A cow coughs, far off a donkey brays, and near at hand a troubled infant wails. In the still night air, the little hamlet alone sleeps around the spread of the building of stone. Step inside, look around, listen and feel, time's heavy silence, pressing and real. Hear the worshippers whispering steeped in the stone, sense the shout of praise, weep for the widow's moan. A moped yowls, far off the traffic rumbles, and near at hand a drunken wanderer stumbles. In the still night air, the urban suburb alone sleeps around the spread of the building of stone. Silent stone slabs, damp in the chill night air, loom grey and cold, solid and bare, piled on each other, quarried and hewn, grey-green in the light of an eerie moon. Uh, when we were thinking of what to do for the 750th anniversary of our parish church, we thought it would be nice to meet together and um, think of something that we could leave to our generation. So we decided that the church needed a lot of embroidery and improving the fabric, improving the church. And so we decided, we started off trying to find someone who could actually design uh, the cushions for us because we had been doing a few little hassocks and things and they weren't good enough, yeah. really, not, not Nellie's. Yeah. But, and so we decided, we, we, Cameron Rothwell told us to get in touch with Guy Barton, who had done a lot of embroidery at Lancaster Priory. And so we got in touch with him and his wife, and they were absolutely wonderful. He designed all the embroideries, and his wife helped us, taught us, the different stitches and so it was a, a group of probably about 50 altogether that did them. Some were only um, engaged in doing the finer work um, but there were, must have been about 50 people altogether who helped and we had a wonderful time doing them and we feel that we could leave something that this generation had done because so many things have been added to the church and things have happened over the centuries and we thought it, we should do something. My father was uh, an art master at uh, Marlborough College. He went there in 1948, just after the war, and he just wanted to be a, an artist and an art master. Marlborough College at that time, like any school, was teaching O-levels and A-levels, and so he became very interested and very knowledgeable in architecture, and very knowledgeable in the architecture of Wiltshire and Somerset. My parents would visit family in Winchester, and consequently they went to Winchester Cathedral. In Winchester Cathedral, in the choir, there are some embroideries which were done in the 1950s by Louisa Pessel and Sybil Blunt. And they became very impressed with these embroideries. They liked them, they liked the look of them. And my father felt that he could design embroideries as well. At that time, he didn't have a, a church, as it were, to associate with. So he started designing embroideries for the chapel at Marlborough College. And indeed, there are still his designs at the chapel in Marlborough College. He took that knowledge of architecture up with him up to Lancashire when he came to visit my grandfather uh, at Clafton. And it was the sort of inspiration that he saw 
the pews at Lancaster, which were empty, that he decided to do the embroideries at Lancaster. As my father was doing the embroideries at Lancaster, people became knowledgeable of the designs that he was doing. And so other churches came along and asked my father to design embroideries for their church on commission. And of course, Leyland was one of these churches. Now, when my father was designing embroideries, he didn't come with any preconceived ideas on the location he was going to. He perhaps knew that Leyland had Leyland motors, but he didn't actually go to Leyland with a deliberate intent of putting Leyland motors emblems into his embroideries. So he'd go to a place and he would look at the history of the church, of the Bible, of the area, and put that into the church. Again, perhaps the church was dedicated to a particular saint, and so again, that would become incorporated within the embroideries. He did use overall designs. He might have a theme of a design, which he would use in one or two churches, but basically the design was okay, like a sort of text already there but he would then incorporate the history of that church within it. And that was what was so important to him, to actually create something that was unique to that particular church. My father was the designer, of course, of these embroideries, but my mother was the knitter and stitcher. She was the one who was the craftswoman, who understood and understood all about the knit the stitches that they actually did for the embroideries. It was decided at a very early time that they would actually only use about eight different stitches. This was because it was recognised that any group that they went to help would only have people who were either novices or were very experienced. In other words, there was a full range of people that would actually be involved in the embroideries. And to make sure that everybody had a chance and had an equal chance of doing some that's why they chose to use very few stitches. It was, of course, the stitching which was so important within my father's embroidery because it created the texture. The different stitches created a different texture within each embroidery. So along with the design, the colour and the texture, this created the richness in each piece. When my mother was born, she was christened Mary Morse. But during the 1930s, she went to a finishing school in Switzerland. And it is thought that probably there she got the name Mare. Because the family, of all generations, right the way through her life, always called her Mare. Yet she always signed her checks Mary. So that's sometimes where the confusion does come when people see or hear her name. The pew seat covers all have the same basic design, using only four stitches. Satin stitch, cross stitch, long leg cross stitch and tent stitch. The outline of the design involved accurately counting threads and quite a number of ladies did not feel able to do this but wanted to help with the work. So Mrs Saul, Edna Haydock and myself spent our time working the outlines and pictures and other ladies willingly filled in the background. Sometimes ladies would ask for a certain illustration in the small circles, otherwise a biblical or local connection would be worked. 